Hello everyone, how are you? This lecture we are going to continue with flavonoids. It is the part 4 of flavonoids. So before I start, we we'll, uh, would like to again go through the learning outcomes, where we stand and what we are going to discuss today. So this lecture mainly we will focus on the mechanism of action of flavonoids. And uh, yes, uh, in our last lecture also we discussed a few mechanism of action of uh, flavonoids. This lecture mainly we will be discussing the mechanism of action of uh, anti-cancer, uh, uh, mechanism of action of flavonoids as anti-cancer drug as well as uh, antiviral drug. So at the end of this lecture you will be able to uh, explain the mechanism of action of flavonoids and we will also test your knowledge through various questions. So first, coming to anti-cancer activities of flavonoid, I would like to mention here flavonoids uh, have been found to be responsible to show anti-cancer activity by different ways. It means different uh, types of different kinds of action. I would like to mention that so far more than 200 types of cancer have been reported. So since there are more than 200 types of cancer, so there are different different uh, mechanisms involved in different types of cancers. And when we talk about flavonoids as anti-cancer agents, they are found to show or exhibit anti-cancer activity by different means. In this lecture, we will be uh, discussing some of the mechanism of action of flavonoids as anti-cancer agent. So one of the most important way flavonoids exhibit anti-cancer activity is by down-regulation of mutant P53 protein. Now the question is uh, how it helps as an anti-cancer agent by down-regulating mutant P3 protein. That means we should know what is P3 protein and their role. Then how they are helping the cancer cells. Then only we will understand how down-regulation of P3 protein is helpful for the treatment of cancer. And this mutation of P3 protein is again found to be one of the uh, most common genetic abnormality that is uh, associated with human cancer. Now the role of P3 proteins, they are found to be very important protein, class of protein uh, involved in the regulation uh, or progression through cell cycle and apoptosis. So I would like to mention here, this P3 protein, they play two contrasting roles. How? We will see. So first of all, they activate DNA repair proteins if during the cell cycle DNA is found to have sustained damage so by activating the DNA repair protein okay they helps to uh, repair the DNA not only that they also cause a temporary arrest or hold of cell cycle during the G1 and GS phase once they recognize there is a damaged DNA in that way they prevent the progression of cell from one phase to another phase so that the cell moves from one phase to another phase in a normal way without carrying the abnormal genetic material mainly DNA. So you see they not only activate the DNA repair protein they also hold or halt the cell cycle temporarily to provide sufficient time to this DNA repair protein so that it can fix the damage and by doing so if the cell is not able to repair the DNA protein, then they initiate a contrasting uh, process. We call it as apoptosis, that is programmed cell death, okay, to kill the abnormal cell at that stage without allowing, allowing the cell to progress further. Now, in case of cancer, it has been observed that this, this P3 proteins undergo mutation as a result of which the cancer cells are able to bypass mutations. So flavonoids act as anti-cancer agent by uh, down-regulating those uh, mutant P3 protein and thus leading to arrest the cancer cell or kill the cancer cell in the G2 to N phase of the cell cycles. Secondly, Flavonoids can also inhibit the heat shock protein. Now the question is again, what are those heat shock proteins? 
these are the class of protein which are produced by cell in response to exposure to different stressful condition that a cell may face or undergo such as exposure to heat cold uv light or even during own healing or tissue remodeling these proteins are known as heat shock because they were first identified and described in relation to heat shock so these are generally the protein which protects the cell from different stressful conditions now the question is how this heat shock proteins are helpful to the cancer cell okay and how by preventing this heat shock protein you can kill the cancer cells now coming to the role of heat shock proteins in cancer it has been observed that this heat shock proteins are highly expressed in cancer cell and forms a complex with the mutant p3 protein just now we have seen the mutant uh, discussed about the mutant p3 protein and thus they allow the tumor cells to bypass apoptosis even though tumor cells we know they are abnormal cells they are able to uh, bypass the body's normal process of apoptosis because of the protection given by heat shock protein and also because of the mutation of the p3 protein and thus these heat shock proteins allow improved cancer cell survival under different bodily stress condition and allow the cancer cell to survive and progress further causing invasion and metastasis to whole body not only that interestingly these heat shock proteins are also found to be responsible for providing resistance to a lot of anti cancer drug thus flavonoids by inhibiting this heat shock proteins are found to be very useful as anti cancer agent there are many other ways flavonoids shows anti cancer activity in different types of cancer for example flavonoids are also found to inhibit egfr tyrosine kinase enzyme okay or egfr tyrosine kinase activity the most important example of flavonoid that have been investigated to show uh, egfr tyrosine kinase inhibition is quercetin i would like to mention little bit about egfr tyrosine kinase activity look at this key chain now we know there are four different types of egfr that is epidermal growth factor receptors they this receptor remains just you know consider my hand as a cell the remains just like this above the cell in the normal condition as monomer when they are activated there by their endogenous ligand they form dimerization and this dimerization causes the activation of intracellular uh, tyrosine kinase this tyrosine kinase contains a atp binding site consider this ring consider this ring as an atp binding site so upon activation of tyrosine kinase atp binding or you can say auto phosphorylation of this tyrosine kinase takes place by binding of atp to the atp binding site then this auto phosphorylation of atp binding site of tyrosine kinase leads signal okay leads signal which is responsible for dna synthesis and cell proliferation interestingly this flavonoids are able to uh, stop this tyrosine egfr tyrosine kinase activity either by okay preventing the atp binding at the atp binding site or by preventing the dimerization of egfr one of the most example of flavonoid that is able to prevent the tyrosine egfr tyrosine kinase activity is quercetin secondly they also found to cause inhibition of estrogen receptor binding capacity so by uh, preventing the binding of estrogen to its receptor it we know that hormones are also very uh, one of the important uh, factor required for the cell growth so they also indirectly cause the uh, prevent the cancer cell to utilize the hormones then they also found to cause inhibition of expression of mutant keras proteins <coughs> now again when we talk about mutant keras protein we need to understand little bit about what is keras protein so this keras proteins again the keras they mainly controls cell proliferation when 
it functions normally in normal conditions but if they undergo mutation they fail or to send the negative signaling or in other words the negative signaling is negative signaling of cell proliferation is disrupted as a result of which the cells keeps growing continuously which may lead to the development of cancer so by inhibiting the mutant KRAS protein flavonoids can inhibit the cancer cell growth again now coming to some of the examples of flavonoids of flavonoid containing food that are found to be uh, very good uh, for the treatment of cancer it has been observed that the consumption of onions and or apples which are the major considered as major source of quercetin found to be inversely associated with the incidence of various types of cancers like prostate cancer, lung cancer, stomach and breast cancer. So eat apples every day. So keep your body away from the development of different types of cancer. Now coming to antiviral activity. Flavonoids again shows antiviral activity in different ways. One of the example is 567-trihydroflavone 7 or glucoside. It is found to inhibit the human cell leukemia virus type 1. Not only that, flavonoids are also found to be very effective against HIV, that is hemio, uh, human immunodeficiency virus. Now the question is how they show uh, anti-HIV activity. Flavonoid shows anti-HIV activities by different ways. First of all, they are found to cause inhibition of HIV-1 reverse transcriptase. Examples of flavonoid that are able to cause inhibition of HIV-1 reverse transcriptase are flavon. One of the example is flavon or glucoside. I would like to mention what is HIV reverse HIV-1 reverse transcriptase. This is a kind of uh, enzyme that is utilized by the HIV to copy its genetic material. By using this enzyme, HIV generates complementary DNA from DNA, which is the and the process is known as reverse transcription. And flavonoids, by inhibiting this HIV-1 reverse transcriptase. Uh, found to be helpful for the treatment of HIV. Of course, this is only shown in few experimental. More work need to be done to confirm the further confirm the hypothesis. They also found to cause the inhibition of HIV-1 proteinase, which is also an important enzyme required for the HIV uh, life cycle. Example of flavonoid that can cause the HIV-1 proteinase is Jardinin A and Robinetin. They are also found to cause inhibition of DNA polymerase. One of the most important example is catechins. So DNA polymerase, as you know, these are the enzyme responsible for the uh, synthesis of DNA from its building block, that is deoxynucleotides. So by inhibiting this enzyme, DNA polymerase, flavonoid can again inhibit the synthesis of DNA of HIV. Flavonoids are also found to be very effective against dengue a virus type 2 and mainly by uh, inhibition of the viral polymerase enzyme. Examples of flavonoids that were found to be uh, you know, effective for the inhibition of the viral polymerase are quercetin, asparagine and diazine. I would like to ask you certain questions here from the entire mechanism of action. Which of the following flavonoids can reduce the plasma uric acid? Try to recall the last class we have discussed. The correct answer is quercetin. Next question. Which of the following flavonoids can inhibit the three you know, inflammatory mediators or enzymes like COX-2, LOX and INOS that is inducible nitric oxide synthase. The answer is again quercetin. So you see the quercetin shows quercetin shows multiple effect. Of quercetin is one of the 
very uh, versatile flavonoid you can see you can say that it is uh, found to be useful in different types of diseases next question which of the following flavonoid can inhibit pd1 and thus can reduce the airway inflammation pd1 is found to be highly expressed in airway inflammation okay of asthma and COPD patients the correct answer is epigenin no, the correct answer is P, that is naringenin. Last question from the today's class, which of the following statements are true regarding the anti-cancer activity of flavonoids? Read the statement. They cause down regulation of P3 protein, down regulation of mutant P3 protein. They promote heat shock proteins to cancers or kill cancer cell. They inhibit heat shock proteins to can, uh, kill cancer cell. The last option is inhibition of expression of mutant keras protein. Which are the correct option? Option A. No, it's wrong. The correct option is B. Because they remember here, the flavonoids do not cause down re regulation of P3 protein that is uh, useful for the normal cell that is present in the normal cell. They cause the down, re down regulation of mutant p3 protein that are only found in cancer cell they do not affect the p3 protein of the normal cell secondly they do not prop uh, promote they inhibit the heat shock proteins of the cancer cell only and also further they can inhibit the expression of mutant keras proteins so i think with this we will finish our lecture today here Thank you very much for your attention. We'll continue in the next class again.